Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're checking out a very powerful tool that you should consider adding to your game development toolbox, especially because it is free and open source. It's called F3D, and at first glance, it looks like a 3D model viewer. You can see F3D in action right here, and I'm not going to lie, it is a 3D model viewer, but it does so much more. You can see how useful this thing is in just a moment. First off, uh, it is used as a 3D model viewer, and that in and of itself is quite useful. As you can see from this one, it does show animation. There's a couple of different modes for actually moving things around. Uh, you have control over a number of aspects, for example, space to render or not render, and then I could do things like press R, and we're actually going to switch into ray tracing mode. Now you're going to notice there's a little bit of noise going on here. Well, then I can press D to throw in a denoiser as well, and you're going to get a rendered uh, result there. So yeah, this is actually a ray traced result with denoising applied. So it's not just a viewer, it is a viewer with quite a few capabilities. So we're going to turn ray tracing back off. Uh, you can hit the H key at any time, and you'll actually see the list of things you can do. So for example, transparency is currently turned off. We can turn transparency on by hitting P. We can turn ambient occlusion on by hitting Q. Uh, we can turn uh, tone mapping on or off by hitting A. So I think it's aces off the default, but I'm not 100% certain. Oh, sorry, A, A is anti-aliasing. Uh, T is tone mapping. So tone mapping on, tone mapping off. So you can have it render different styles. You can also toggle the axis off, the grid off. Uh, you can display the metadata for it if there is any. There is none in this particular case. You can show the current FPS rate that you are running at by hitting the Z key. And oh, it's down here. Uh, so you can see the actual FPS down here. It's actually running very slow at this point in time. Uh, but you get an idea of what it's like. You can also change the way that uh, trackball works. You can change the lighting in the scene uh, by hitting L to increase the lighting uh, and then uh, shift and L to decrease the lighting. So that is a pretty straightforward program. It is a 3D viewer. You can actually integrate it in so it can generate thumbnails of 3D files for you uh, within Windows Explorer. It is available cross-platform. Uh, where this thing really shines, though, is from the command line. You don't need to use it from a command line. Uh, loading a file into it is literally a matter of drag and drop in. Uh, you can then move around in the scene. You can also press enter to reset your camera to the default. So it does work functionally as a 3D object viewer. The only area I find I'm a little disappointed by is it uses um, Asimp as its importer. And then what I find from that is it doesn't support textures always on FBX. So this one works because it is a... Um, non-PBR workflow. Uh, so PBR workflow in FBX files, you don't necessarily render correctly. That's a little bit unfortunate, but that's really the only downside. And I think that's inherited from Asimp itself. Now where this guy really shines is when you start dropping into the command line. So here we got uh, the F3D data directory. There is uh, you know, a number of files to go and work around. I'll show you how to go ahead and get these. So what you can do is once you've got this installed, in, in my case, I installed it to my system path, you can run it with F3D. So if it's F3D, say damaged helmet, like so, and it'll open up a viewer like this. Pretty straightforward, easy to work with. But you have so much more control over what's actually done. Uh, I do think it's F3D dash dash H for full, no, not. It's F3D dash, single dash. Oh, okay, and then I fat fingered it dash H, like so, and you'll get a list of the commands that are available for you over here. Uh, but what we're going to do is show you some pretty advanced options where this guy would be quite useful. So again, uh, you can bring up and draw an image just by using uh, so F3D, uh, and then let's do that again. Damaged uh, helmet, like so. Uh, but we could also come in and set it to, um, let's say we want to use an HDRI map. So I do have an HDRI map here, uh, future underscore parking underscore 2K. Uh, so if I want to load that guy in, I just do dash dash HDRI equals, and then uh, what was it again? Future parking underscore 2K dot HDR, like so. And now we all have the HDR environment map shown here. Once it loads it in, it's taking a smattering of time, but you can see there, and then you'll get the results of the HDRI map it's being sent in. Uh, you also have the option of telling it to blur the background. Uh, speaking of which, you can also say, um, I don't want to see the background. I want to see the edges and so on. So you've got a lot of control over how it actually displays things. So for example, if we want to just show the geometry, we can do F3D dash dash geometry only. And then the uh, file you want to bring in. So let's do my uh, scene.gltf and it will just show uh, the geometry of the image that we're loading. Okay, so that one actually failed. What did I do? F dash dash, dash geometry dash only. 
Okay, that should work. I'm not sure what, what the issue is on that one. All right, so we'll skip past that because that is the joy of doing uh, live demonstrations. So instead of here, let's actually do rend edge rendering, so dash E. And then here you see you're getting the uh, the polygonal outline of the image you're looking at. So if you want to look at the, you know, just the shape, the way that uh, an object was composed, you can do it that way. But where this guy really shines is you can actually do fun. So let's say I've got this image right here, and I want to render this out for my game. So I could go right away. Let's do the exact same thing. So, edge, so we'll do the edge rendering again. And then I'll just do a dash output equals out.png. And you notice it didn't display, but if I do star dot png here okay i did it again so it's very finicky about the number of slashes which is very irritating uh but there we go so it's quickly rendered should spit it out to that file there you go so out.png is there let's go ahead and open that guy up so you see the rendered result so here is that guy with edges on and rendered loading into an image editor and here you see you got the grid showing up, which, by the way, you can turn off with the toggle. Uh, you got the uh, overall shape itself, but it's rendered out to a PNG image. You do also have control over the uh, size and the shape and so on of that PNG. But let's do something a little bit more advanced. So we're going to take the exact same scene right here. And this is going to do, uh, it's opening up that scene. It's ray tracing it. Uh, dash T, I forget. Uh, ambient occlusion. Uh, and you're also doing the denoising and so on. So a number of different prompts. I'll show you where you can get all the settings later on. We don't want to render the background. We're going to move the camera, so like a bit of a three-quarter angle. We're going to set the origin to the uh, middle of the screen plus up a little bit, and let's go see what that does right there. So there you can see, same thing, move the camera, slightly different settings and so on. So let's say you want to go ahead and render that one out. Again, exact same thing, and then we'll do dash, so was it, yeah, double dash, double dash, output, uh, equals uh, my render.png and you can use this to actually render sprites. So you could use this in a tool where you want to render a directory full of 3D objects for the camera set to a specific destination or point and you're actually getting a ray traced output. So let's go ahead and check out my render.png and here is the end result. There's one thing I didn't turn off. I don't think I turned off the axis orientation here. So I think we're going to get a transparent background render with the, yeah, with the axis there. So you can go ahead and take that out later on. But there you see, if you want to render sprites for game ready uh, with no background, you're basically getting a built-in ray tracer with this guy as well, uh, which is quite cool. And you got a ton of other options and controls in here as well. So let's go take a look at uh, the actual uh, complete functionality here. So if you want to go ahead and check this guy out, it's available at f3d.app. Again, it is free and open source under the BSD3 license. Uh, the documentation here will walk you through everything you need to know. So what you're going to want to do is come in here and get the options. By the way, installation, uh, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, a number of different sources. It's also available under a variety of different package managers. So if you want to use this specifically from the command line, get things up and going, you can do so very, very easily. Uh, there is also an element of desktop integration uh, on Windows and Linux. No thumbnail generation on Mac OS, unfortunately. Uh, but if you wanted to generate thumbnails in a directory for you of 3D objects, you can set that up. I personally, I don't like extending my shell too often, so I didn't do that. Uh, in terms of options, here you can get an idea of the command line options that are available to you. Uh, there is a ton of functionality in here. Again, you can set the the orientation where the camera is, if you want to see it rendered uh, in a certain manner, uh, you can set the window resolution, you can define manually define uh, materials to use, you can set an HDR or environment map to use in the background. Um, you've got control over the size of the window to be shown or demonstrated and so on. Again, you can blur the background. So if you want the HDR image in, but you don't want it to be in focus, you just want the lighting details, you can set that there with the blur. Uh, if you're working with scientific visualization stuff is available right here. Um, and then we got the camera set settings available there, ray trace options. Again, you got the denoising options there. And if you want your ray trace to look very, very good, you can jack the sample rate up. Although when I changed this, I did find uh, things got a little bit buggy. Uh, you've got, again, some OpenGL rendering. So this, is, this isn't, I don't think, going to affect the outcome uh, if you're rendering to a file. Uh, but looking at it on screen, again, you got those translucency and being occlusion, anti-aliasing and tone mapping options. And then you got some testing options here as well. Really uh, cool tool in that regard. Um, if you're interested in checking out all of the, the assets we looked at in this particular demo are available for download here. So go to the gallery section there and you will find a link to it right here. Uh, it's a Google Drive link, a link yeah, where it's a couple hundred megabytes in size. So if you want to grab this guy and look at very specific data, you can do it right there. Uh, as I mentioned, to start things off, this is an open source project. Uh, so it is under the BSD3 open source license. Um, yeah.
and you can check it out. As you can see here, uh, it's very actively developed, which is, again, uh, quite cool. Uh, and it's if you just need a 3D viewer, you can use it for that. There's some cool functionality in it as well. So if I come back here and show you here with this guy right here, uh, bring up H. Uh, let's turn transparency back off so you can actually read. So P. All right. So you're going to notice down here, um, you've actually got the ability to open up so you could reload the current file by pressing up, but you can press down and it adds all of the renderable files from the current uh, directory, uh, same directory as the loaded object. So if you've got a bunch of objects you want to iterate through, you do have that option there as well. So it makes it so you can navigate through a number of things. Unfortunately, it also does tend to crash if it runs into an object that it can't support. Uh, it supports a number of different file sets. So uh, digital content stuff and scientific data, things like GLTF, STL, STEP, PLY, OBJ, FBX, and Alembic. Again, the only real big negative other than the occasional crash I've seen uh, is that FBX doesn't necessarily support um, PBR workflow uh, texture device there. So uh, if you're not getting your texture support from your FBX files, that's probably why, which is a little bit unfortunate, but that does seem to be something that it inherited from ASIMP and not something that they did themselves. But hopefully that gets fixed in time. But getting a 3D viewer that actually shows textures in FBX files is strangely rare. So uh, kind of a common problem to run into in general. But ladies and gentlemen, that is F3D, a fast and minimalistic 3D viewer uh, that is also a uh, ray tracer and so on and so forth. So it's a very handy handy tool to have. Uh, let me know what you think of this one, and I'll check you out later. Goodbye.